Hi, it's Dr. Huffstader, and today I wanted to talk to you about cholesterol, because as a class of medications, cholesterol-lowering drugs are, are the number one prescribed drugs in this country, and we have patients that come into this office, uh, many, many of them, who are on cholesterol-lowering medications, and uh, most of them have having the faintest clue about what, what their cholesterol means and, and why it is that their cholesterol might be a problem for them. So I wanted to talk to you just a little bit about it because there's some misapprehensions uh, on the parts of the patients and on the parts of the physicians, uh, by the way, who are prescribing uh, these medications to lower cholesterol. Basically, there is one cholesterol. Cholesterol is cholesterol is cholesterol. We talk about there being a good, quote-unquote good, and quote-unquote bad cholesterol. But the truth is, is that there's only one type of cholesterol, and that's cholesterol. What makes it either good or bad so-called good or bad, is, is the, the, the container in which the cholesterol is being carried. And the analogy that I use would be like a gasoline, carrying around gasoline. And you can carry gasoline around in a, in a container that's designed to carry gasoline, a gas can, or you can carry it around in, a, in an old milk jug. One of them is going to be relatively safe, and the other one probably not the best container for you to be carrying gasoline around in. One of them could be quote-unquote good gasoline, and one of them would be quote-unquote bad gasoline. That's what we're talking about when we're talking about good and bad cholesterol as a way of, as a way of, uh, of describing it to you. There's only one type of cholesterol. Uh, but, but the quote-unquote good cholesterol, that is the good containers, are what are called HDLs, high-density lipoproteins. And the bad cholesterol is what are called LDLs, or low-density lipoproteins. Uh, and we, as a rule, like to keep the HDLs relatively high and the LDLs relatively low. And I won't get into the details about the hard numbers there because they're, they're somewhat controversial. Uh, we have our sort of criteria that we, that we look at in this office, but everybody has their own. Uh, what, what is not particularly controversial, however, but something that is, sort of flies under the radar for most clinicians, and many aren't even aware of it, is that what is more important than the frank number of cholesterol particles, the total cholesterol, what's more important than the number is the number of containers that the cholesterol is being carried in. So, for instance, if I had a gallon of water and I poured it into 10 containers, each of which filled to the rim with water, you would have a gallon of water and we could measure the containers by the number 10. If you had the same gallon of water, but I poured it into, say, 50 containers, each of which filled to the rim with water, you'd still have a gallon of water, but you'd have that gallon of water spread apart over 50 containers. The same thing's true in your blood with cholesterol. You can have a cholesterol of, say, 200, uh, which is fine, which is normal. Uh, some people want to prescribe statin drugs for a cholesterol of 200. They shouldn't, but they do. Uh, but say you have a cholesterol of 200, and it's spread out over 10 containers, relatively large containers, perfectly safe. If you had that same 200 cholesterol spread out over 100 containers, you'd have containers that are much smaller. That is the risk factor vis-a-vis -vis cholesterol. It's, and it's, it's so-called pattern B, low-density lipoproteins, where the lipoproteins get smaller and smaller and smaller. Uh, it's the same amount of cholesterol, but it's carried in fewer and fewer, uh, or I should say more and more, lipoproteins. This is probably the most significant independent risk factor for cardiovascular disease vis-a-vis -vis your cholesterol the size of the particles. And in fact, some of the more sort of studious uh, cardiologists have gone to calling cardiovascular disease small particle disease, which I, I think is a great descriptor because that's what it is. Uh, you can have a cholesterol of 250, 300, and if you have a large, buoyant particles, your risk of, of heart disease related to your cholesterol is relatively low. You can have a cholesterol of under 200 and have 
small, tightly packed particles, uh, and many of them, and you'd have a higher risk of cholesterol. Now, the way this is tested is this information can't be found on a typical cholesterol panel. Uh, your physician would have to order the, the, the regular lipid panel, which includes total cholesterol, HDLs, LDLs, and triglycerides. Sometimes it includes something called VLDLs, but usually it's just the four cholesterol, to, uh, HDLs, LDLs, and triglycerides. But then they'd have to order a fifth test, which is called an, an APOB. That's APOB100, but typically they just call it an APOB, and they look for blood levels of APOB. And I won't get into the details about what APOB is, but basically the, the level of APOB will tell you something about the size of the particles. And that is where the attention ought to be focused, is increasing the size of the particles of LDLs. Now, what are some of the things that could cause the particles to get small to begin with? Well, uh, high carbohydrate diets, particularly high in fructose, fruit sugars, fruit juices, high fructose corn syrup, things like that. Uh, number two, certain drugs, particularly uh, non-selective beta blockers, drugs that are prescribed for, for high blood pressure. Uh, estrogen, uh, any sort of estrogen therapy uh, and the birth control pill will all cause LDLs to get smaller. Um, those three things are probably the top of the list. Also, certain steroid drugs will cause LDLs to become smaller. Um, so the way to get them to grow larger would be to have a lower carbohydrate diet, increase the intake of omega-3 fatty acids like from fish oil or cod liver oil, uh, and avoid those medications. Those measures creating larger, more buoyant particles that carry cholesterol around will go a long way to protecting you, your, your, your heart, and your cardiovascular system from damage that could be caused from oxidized uh, particles of cholesterol. I hope this is helpful to you. I truly appreciate you listening, and I'll drop another one of these on the website pretty soon. Thank you.